He comes and goes on a rainbow. Let's hear it for the Culture Blaster, Michael Snyder. Greetings and salutations, MT Show people. Hi, Kim. Hi, Albert. Uh, everybody that's involved. Teresa joined the uh, Yeah, we had the quite the crew today. today. Yeah, Really, really great. And uh, I, I know you've been having some throat issues, but you should tell the people, because of those issues, you landed the lead role in the animated feature Froggy Went to Courtney. I do have some problems <laughs> with the... Uh... With the throat. I'm not saying there's a croak involved. I missed a couple of big voiceover jobs because of the, the, the. I can't get any projection from the voice. Well, speaking of croaking, um, yesterday to commemorate the death of O.J. Simpson, I slashed the tires on a white Ford Bronco. I felt so, <laughs> oh, man. Felt so good about it too. <laughs> I know it's a. Con and the, and those were in short supply with uh, with that crime. I agree. I agree. That was not the way things went. No, uh, shout out to Ron Cook, by the way. Big shout out. I like to give, uh, you know, we're, we're crowdfunded, Michael. So I'm giving a big shout out to Ron. Big shout out. $20 super sticker. You Thank have you. a massive crowd that's ever growing, like I said last week. They're 30, really. 30,000 plus or, uh, subscribers. Yeah, th I think, yeah. It's great. Uh, eligible sitting presidents not on the ballot. The political science is ridiculous. Yes, uh, Murphy Ryan. Yes. The science. The science is ridiculous. Murphy Rowan with the five spots. So thank you for that uh, super chat. Michael, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I, I, this is okay. Uh, you know, your fundraising is. is uh, well, when it, people jump in, I like to celebrate them, it's Michael. It's as egregious as PBS. I, right. I want to just tell you right now, but uh, right. rather than keep people on tenterhooks, shall we talk about the popular culture of the weekend? Well, well I, I popped. Ask, I popped. Kim, Kim, Kim had something? Did you have something, Yeah, Kim? I'm hoping you can turn Michael Snyder up a little bit. I think he's low. Is this better? Uh, Michael, can you speak, please? I shall speak. Is that tripping, any better or not? Trippingly across Maybe the Maybe a little, a little higher. A higher still. This is yeah. me we're messing up with the, with the levels today, man. I can't even imagine uh, the tech right. involved. Thank you. I think I have him cranked up all the time. I don't understand. You know, they do this to me all the time. I, I don't know I, what they, the hell do. they do. I it don't for. understand why I can't get a. Uh, it's just, I mean, it, and where are those pictures I was supposed to and see? And I also want to know what happened to the pictures I was supposed to see this week. Let's continue. Citizen Swain, twenty dollars for the Culture Blasters Popcorn Fund. I um, a big shout big out shout to out. Uh, Citizen Swain for the twenty. Thank you. Uh, you could have given it to me directly, Heather. Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, it's a friend of Michael's. Well, I'm glad there's somebody out there that considers themselves a friend of mine because I think friends are in short supply. Uh, Citizen Swain. Girl, nice you just job. Woo. Yeah, all right. So let's let's go with the films. Let's talk a little bit about movies because um, there is a very provocative film that leads the pack this weekend. The new movie from Bravura filmmaker Alex Garland. He, Bravura, yeah. He of the brilliant and disturbing thriller about the dangers of AI, Ex Machina. Oh, was, uh, one of my favorite movies ever. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, uh, the less successful and even more arcane science fiction actioner, Annihilation, the one with Natalie Portman, and the daring and utterly bizarre psychological mind melter men is pretty daring and topical on the face of it, this new movie. It's called Civil War. That's right, Civil War. And it's not an historical epic about the Union and the Confederacy and Abe Lincoln and Jefferson Davis. There is no sign of Ken Burns in this Civil War. This Civil War, uh, also though set on the continent of North America, like that one from the 1860s, uh, might be ripped from tomorrow's headlines. It's about a near future armed conflict for control of the U.S., as in the blue versus the red, uh, rather than the blue versus the gray. Although screenwriter and director Garland never really specifies the political philosophies or the trigger for this war that has erupted between a Washington, D.C. entrenched government with a, a seemingly feckless president as its figurehead. Feckless. And an unlikely rebel coalition comprised of Texas and California. I mean, that's unlikely. And they seek to bring down the status quo. But Garland's Civil War is also about those caught in the middle of the fighting, as represented by four journalists on a road trip from uh, a terrorist-plagued New York City to the front lines of the rebels as they advance on D.C. from Charlottesville, Virginia. The dystopia is seen through the eyes of the journalists led by longtime war photographer Lee, played by Kirsten Dunst, and her reporter colleague Joel, played by Wagner Mora. 
And they're accompanied by older veteran journalist Sammy, and that would be played by Stephen Henderson, who is, as he suggests on his last assignment, and an increasingly reckless novice photographer, Jesse, uh, played by Kelly Spaney of Priscilla, who is eager to emulate Lee. And by the way, I know that on the surface, the movie is an apolitical look at the atrocity of war. I mean, consider the ideological disconnect of the combined Texas, California, Western forces. Well, that's really clever, by the way. That way you really just don't know what's blue and what's red. It's not a, you know, you're not picking sides in the first few minutes of the movie because of that coalition. That's how canny, I would suggest, yeah, uh, really Garland is here. Super clever. Uh, also, it suggests that for all of the social and technological advances in American society, here's a truth. We are so divided for so many reasons, ignorance, bigotry, greed, uh, the lightning fast dissemination of digital disinformation, and so on, that something once thought implausible, a full-on U.S. civil war in the 21st century, is not out of the realm of possibility. That makes this thing scary. Sure. Uh, uh, but if you, play, uh, if you pay any close attention here, you might notice that the president, who was under siege in D.C., is on his third consecutive term of office, and he's played by Nick Offerman, initially known for his role as an anti-government libertarian city official on the TV sitcom uh, Parks and Recreation. Uh, an actor known for playing an anti-government official was cast as a tyrannical president who has ignored term limits. Hmm, I sense a subtext here. <laughs> I could be wrong. Anyway, the whole enterprise is smart, exciting, and tragically brutal as tragically brutal as war itself, even if the vague elements of the circumstances and the backstory are potential landmines. Uh, on a gut level, if you see this in an IMAX theater, it will, speaking of landmines, blow you away. Uh, Dunst, Spaney, Mora, and Henderson make for ideal travel companions on this journey into an American heart of darkness. And yes, the Joseph Conrad reference was intended. One more quick note, an appearance by Oscar, Emmy, and BAFTA nominee Jesse Plemons, uh, Dunst's husband in real life, packs a real wallop in Civil War. Wow. It's in theaters. Wow. It sounds pretty intense. Uh, it is. And again, you may have issues, as I did, with, you know, well, what exactly made this happen? But that's really not the point of the movie. Yeah, that sounds like it's uh, about the brutality of a country coming unglued. Uh, yeah, that's fair. And the fact that uh, it can happen here. Right, exactly. Uh, imagine if you will now. And Hold on a second. I, I'm sorry to do this, but I mean, you I'm, know, I'm Mike, sure you are. Michael serves up uh, ding words like a short order chef. Arcane is pointed out, Tom. I lose track of them. Canny and emulate all of them. So nicely done. Go ahead. Uh, towards some more flourishing vocabulary. Imagine, if you will, Mark, a National Geographic special about one of the most mysterious creatures thought to roam the wilds. That's the vibe of Sasquatch Sunset from the uh, antic fraternal directing team of David and Nathan Zellner, uh, a mix of uh, faux nature documentary, comedy, family drama, and mm -hmm. survival tale written by David Zellner. Sasquatch Sunset follows a quartet of Sasquatches, yeah, those big hairy creatures, uh, a veritable Bigfoot clan over the course of one year as they live their lives in the largely unspoiled forests and glens of what appears to be Northern California or Oregon. And if I'm not mistaken, it was shot around Mendocino. I could be wrong. Uh, so furry and free of the niceties of civilization, uh, an older alpha male, a younger male, the female of the group that... Uh, the males both covet, and an even younger Sasquatch live off the land even as humankind lurks at the periphery of their world. So Nathan Zellner, who was a, char who was a character actor of note, plays the Alpha, whose curiosity and lack of restraint can be problematic, and Christoph Zajak Denik is a gifted physical actor whose portrayal of the littlest Bigfoot is downright poignant. But the real surprise here is the casting and performance of the other male and of the female who are played in fearless fashion by Jesse Eisenberg. That's right, Mark Zuckerberg in The Social Network, Lex Luthor in those DC superhero movies, and Riley Keough uh, of the great indie on the road dramedy Zola and the rock and roll faux documentary uh, Daisy Jones and the Six. They are unrecognizable in full Sasquatch regalia. And regardless of how scatological some of the Sasquatch behavior is, and it is hilariously so in some cases. 
they fully commit to it. And I mean, I'm thinking this is Elvis Presley's granddaughter, Riley Keough, portraying a Sasquatch and and definitely delivering the goods. I, I, it's I, wild. I, it, totally wild. Okay, so Sasquatch Sunset is no Harry and the Hendersons, which was kind of a middling film comedy that's the only other significant Bigfoot movie I can think of off the top of my head. But this sunset is fresh, idiosyncratic, and thoroughly entertaining as it plays out in beautiful natural settings, through changing seasons, and through changes in the shaggy, lumbering quartet. I thought it was so cool. Uh, Sasquatch Sunset is in theaters right now. Wow. Yeah, so it's it's not a comedy. It's comedic. It's funny. It gets a little slapstick. Again, have you ever watched monkeys uh, at a zoo behave yeah. between one another? There's some element of that. This is These are primates, but, you know, uh, a little less evolved from us. Or are they? Anyway. Will um, I cry at the end, Michael? Um, you might. You might not. I don't know. I know that you're uh, an animal lover, but, you know. I am, and I, I, I sense that humans ruin their life at the end. Am I right about that, Michael? I know nothing about this movie, but I'm, I'm telling you, it's my experience uh, on this earth that human beings are going to ruin this uh, handful of sweet uh, Sasquatches. I, I just want to say no spoilers, Mark. No spoilers, at least not for this movie. All right, go ahead. Moving along, even as it dances around its circumstances and situation, kind of like the way Civil War does, uh, the post-apocalyptic horror movie Arcadian, oh my God, it's kind of another creepy future. Uh, this has a visceral power to it, as well as the visceral power of top build cast member Nicolas Cage. Our man Nick plays survival-minded <laughs> rural denizen Paul, a father- Visceral and denizen. Dedicated to keeping his two sons, Thomas, a dreamer, and one of those lovers, not fighters, and Joseph, who's kind of a builder scientist type, safe from a threat that comes by night. So it's the future. There's something hinky that went went on, and civilization has been imperiled. In any case, monsters lurk. And when Thomas decides to visit the cute girl at the neighboring farm and fails to come home before nightfall, Daddy Paul must head out and risk it all to find the kid and try to fend off the legions of beasties. So... Directed by Benjamin Brewer from Mike Nealon's spare script, Arcadian is more family drama in the wilderness. Wow, there's a reference to Sasquatch Sunset. Uh, but there are no Sasquatches here, but there are like horrible creatures. Let's just say yikes about that. And it's a trashed near future, but its war is an uncivil one between humanity and truly fearsome, fast-moving, fanged and clawed demons that brought to mind the shape-shifting antagonist of John Carpenter's The Thing. Remember how scary that thing oh was? Oh, my God. It's one of the most the scariest movies Imagine I've ever seen. Imagine pa packs of them. Wow. They, okay. Um, I had questions. Are the monstrosities some kind of zombies, mutations, or something else? Is the setting America or is it Ireland? Because those farmhouses look mighty Irish. And okay, that's where the movie was shot. And what's the true provenance of Paul's sons? Ultimately, you know what? I didn't care about the answers or the fact that the characters make some senseless decisions in the face of the threat targeting them with Cage in courageous taciturn mode. In other words, no real, chew no real chewing of the scenery. Uh, fine young actors, Jaden Martell and Maxwell Jenkins as Thomas and Joseph, the sons, and those super creepy, almost elastic creatures. Arcadian is a solid B movie that should satisfy those who want to consume a little nightmare fuel. Oh, wow. And okay. it's in theaters. In theaters. What else do you have? Well, I have something that is also in the horror realm. We have some dark stuff that we're covering. You like your horror, though. Well... You know, I play the hand I'm dealt, Mark. I see. Okay. All right. Very, very good. So Sting, not the rock star, Sting is the second Australian horror movie in the past few weeks that's set in America with American characters and only one American actor. Remember, we discussed Late Night with the Devil, uh, which is one of those sorts of films made in Australia. Yeah, you liked that, I remember. It was a little funky and weird and it's fun. It's really good, and it's yeah. a better feature film than Sting, and that was the first of these two American-set Aussie-made movies. So it, it hues to a very familiar formula. Sting, which is written and uh, directed by Kia Roche-Turner, is a decent creature feature, 
about a spider of unknown origin that ends up in a rundown Brooklyn apartment building and is adopted as a pet by a disaffected 12-year-old girl named Charlotte. A reference probably to Charlotte's Web, I guess, and not Charlottesville as in Civil War. Again, weird. This is like a Venn diagram. Oh, my God. Anyway, this spider has a rather ravenous appetite and seems to grow far more rapidly than your garden variety, uh, variety arachnid. It, it endangers all the folks in the building, whether they're nice or mean or clueless, and any unfortunates who might uh, stop by the tenement. So Charlotte is played by... Uh, Alila Brown, and she has issues with her mother, played by Penelope Mitchell, and her stepfather, played by Ryan Kaur, and he is a struggling comic book artist who works in the building as a handyman to make ends meet. Thus, when things go hinky, he's the guy that has to investigate. Oh, man. Okay. So despite her issues, uh, Charlotte doesn't necessarily want to be an orphan, and she surely has no axe to grind with the exterminator who's called in to investigate what appears to be uh, a, a rat infestation. Um, you know, by the way, he's played for comic relief by that sole American in the cast, uh, Jermaine Fowler. Still, the spider, which Charlotte calls Sting, has an agenda of its own. And the message here, be careful of exotic pets, people. I mean, <laughs> if you're scared of spiders, by the way, you may want to sit this one out. There was a classic uh, National Lampoon magazine cover with someone holding a pistol to the head of a cute dog under the headline, buy this magazine or we'll shoot this dog. Mm. Now, if that made you uneasy, you might not want to watch thing you should probably pass on this i mean seriously as soon as a crying baby a cute little chihuahua and a kitty cat show up in sting anyone watching this has to be thinking uh oh uh, uh, spider chow anyway uh, it's another b movie and one with decent special effects from the gang at weta in new zealand sting isn't bad it's silly bargain matinee or saturday night streaming fun it is in theaters no wow. kim Can you I had something I just want to say the this picture is going to keep me up at night. So it is kind of it's it's yeah. kind of chilling. You see the spider there in the background I, on the I on the ceiling. Right. I can't it, even it, sleep when there's a a normal sized spider on my ceiling. If it's Kim, even on my ceiling, like I can't her, go to sleep her, until um, it's dealt with. But that's her her pet. You're saying right, right. It's her pet. And, that's her pet. And, and Kim, are you afraid of Spider Man? I'm just asking. Not the man. But no. the spider, but the spider. Okay. The man part, the, you know, is machine. The, man, the, the man. man's okay. The spider, yeah. no. Mm, oh, no. God. Oh, okay, yes. so so all the ingredients for a, a rip-roaring time were in place <laughs> with damaged. Um, Samuel L. Jackson stars in this serial killer mystery, wherein Chicago police detective Dan Lawson is called in to consult on a series of murders in Scotland that seem to be copycat killings inspired by a similar slaughter spree that went down in Chicago five years earlier. So Jackson, of course, plays Lawson, a fish out of water in Edinburgh. Uh, the character actor John Hanna, who was kind of a villainous snake in The Mummy, plays a prime suspect who was a member of a kind of freaky religious order. And no less than French leading man Vincent Cassel, recently seen in HBO's Westworld, plays Lawson's ex-partner on the Chicago police force who shows up. Um, so the star power is in effect. But the script lets them all down. The guy from France was uh, his, his partner on the he, Chicago he, he, police he, force? He immigrated, emigrated to I get it, to but the, it just States. seems like a... Well, you know. All right. Buy the uh, premise, uh, you buy the bit. Uh, okay, uh, go ahead. I go think ahead. star power is the issue here, and star yeah. power is in effect. But the script lets them all down with kind of a plodding pace to its mm. reveals and gratuitous twists and turns that just obfuscate things. Go ahead. Obfuscate, go ahead. Yeah. Damaged uh, was co-written by... Johnny Capaldi, who plays the Scottish cop in the case and is decent in the role. Well, I, I wish all these actors were in a more interesting movie. And by the way, the director of Damaged, Terry McDonough, is a veteran of prestige TV and has done great work on shows that include The Expanse, Better Call Saul, Breaking Bad. Damaged shouldn't damage anyone's reputation, okay? But these talented people have all done work that's superior to this. And, and you know, I can't help but think that Jackson took the part in this Scottish production to, to facilitate one of his golfing excursions to the UK. Yeah, it does feel like a money grab a little bit. Yeah, uh, you know, it's in select theaters and available for streaming on demand at the usual platform starting today. All right, so wrap it up. What do you have? One more. One yes, more. sir, go ahead. Uh, I was seduced by the subtleties while flat out impressed by the originality of La Chimera. 
It's an idiosyncratic dramedy about modern day grave robbers who dig up and sell antiquities unearthed from unmarked tombs along a coastal area of contemporary, um, contemporary Italy. It's directed and co-written by Alice Rohrwacher. Um, La Chimera, uh, La Chimera uh, follows the excavating endeavors of the, the Tombaroli. This is a band of Italian scavengers as they plunder, uh, plunder ancient graves that are somehow located with a divining rod by the nomadic uh, fellow Arthur, who was an Englishman, played by Josh O'Connor, the British actor best known in the U.S. as uh, author Lawrence Durrell in the TV series The Durrells. So Arthur is driven, he's driven by a quest to somehow reconnect with his lost love, Benyamina, uh, by seeking out the relics of the past. But the sale of these archaeological finds is patently illegal, and the pursuit of them borders on desecration. And by the way, uh, the Chimera was a fire-breathing female monster of Greek mythology, part lion, part goat, part dragon, which it sounds like something Godzilla and King Kong would fight, but no. Uh, in the case of this occasionally beautiful and spooky movie, it's more of a powerful, unattainable entity that symbolizes Arthur's search for Benya uh, Mina uh, and uh, Benjamin's infirm mother, by the way, in a cool casting note, is played by none other than the great Isabella Rossellini. I thought uh, La Chimera uh, was really cool. It's a cool film. It's in select theaters. Um, and that's what we have in the Wow, Atlanta. that's uh, very impressive. I um, La Chimera, uh, or however you say it. La Chimera. La Chimera. A dramedy about modern-day grave robbers in Italy. There it is. It does have a kind of... Uh, somebody was commenting that '60s kind of feel to the poster. Is it a? Uh, is that the time period in which it? No, uh, take? no, it's sort of timeless. I hmm. think there are there might be cell phones. I could be wrong. I don't know. Maybe was, that's just an Italian thing. Damaged. He said it's uh, it's okay. The yeah. uh, it's okay. It's disappointing. Uh, it, it's no. okay in a disappointing way. <laughs> okay. Uh, damaged. Samuel L. Jackson and Vincent uh, Vincent Cassel. Vincent Cassel. Uh, the French actor who, of course, is his partner from Chicago. Um, star power, no script power, basically, was what uh, I got from your... Yeah, muddy, you know. muddy, muddy script. Sting, the original um, horror movie involving Australian actors, except for one American. Uh, it's set in America, though. And they all play Americans. And they all play Americans. And you never doubt it. Uh, it is... Even the spider speaks with an American accent. It, you, I, I got kind of, uh, I don't know... C plus B minus from you on that one. It's, it's a B minus for lovers of uh, monster movies. Arcadian, the Nicolas Cage film that's in theaters now. Uh, again, I got sort of fair to middling on that. It's better. It's actually qualitatively better than Sting. But, you know, again, it's a B movie. Okay. Sasquatch Sunset, perhaps the most intriguing of the offerings today in terms of, I don't know, maybe uh, premise. Four Sasquatches walk into a bar. Uh, no, but it's four Sasquatches uh, followed over a year's time. And two of the Sasquatches uh, are award-winning actors. Jesse Eisenberg, of course, uh, played Mark Zuckerberg in Social Network. Yep. Also Lux Lu Lex Luthor. Yeah. And Riley Keough from Zola and Daisy Jones and the Six. Among other things. she's uh, She was also in The Girlfriend. Uh, anyway, they both do great jobs. And, yeah. and Michael kind of liked this. Oh, I, I, that and La Camira and, and... Those are your picks for the week? Relatively speaking, except for the big banger, which I think is definitely... Yeah, which is uh, coming up next. Sasquatch Sunset is in theaters, and I'm intrigued. But most intriguing, perhaps potentially most disturbing, and at the same time, perhaps most relevant. Civil War, a near-future battle for control of this country. Jesse Plemons makes a cameo, but there are a lot of very um, gifted actors in this offering, from what I was getting from you, Michael. Yeah, um, a, a high point in Kirsten Dunst's career, I think. She's fantastic in this. Uh, and they are, Jesse Plemons and Kirsten Dunst, a couple in real life. Yeah, but he's really um, a minor figure in the movie. Nonetheless, uh, you know, his scene... Is powerful. Very. Civil War is in theaters. Uh, and uh, it's significant. And one of the things they do so effectively, Michael was saying, is they don't establish red-blue. It's not about that. You've got an alliance between 
California and Texas. So that should tell you all you need to know about the fact that they kept it deliberately confusing. Yeah, that militia wants to bring down the sitting government. So There it is. Uh, Michael, what a fine job you've done, running down different movies that exist in different genres. Uh, I'm always astounded at your abilities. I'm wondering if you want to weigh in on our, uh, well, I'll do this first. I'll say goodbye to you, and then I'm going to, because we've got to break this out as a separate video. Uh, where can we read your stuff, sir? I am, starting on Monday, uh, visible with articles every week in Voice of San Francisco, which is a new daily online publication at voiceofsf.com. And I'm uh, happy and proud to be involved with the organization. A lot of us are uh, refugees from the Marina Times, and we have uh, found new times here. With Voice show. of San Francisco. Check him out soon. You can find him here on Fridays. He comes and goes on a rainbow. Bye-bye, Michael. Fare thee well, and go Giants, go Warriors. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell. You'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.